We've all been sucked into buying a glorious looking plant in store online, only to find that the plant begins to deteriorate as soon as we bring it home. Perhaps the leaves started to turn brown and crispy, or the glorious flowers it had when we bought it disappeared and never came back. Or sometimes this is not always due to something that we have done wrong. Sometimes it is purely down to the fact that we have unknowingly bought an extremely fussy plant, so we're always set up to fail. So let me show you 10 of the fussiest plants you can buy and I avoid that you should avoid too if you want a simple life. Calafeas are plants that I hardly ever buy anymore. So I've been burned too many times in the past and now I've learnt my lesson. The problem with calafeas is that they require very specific conditions for them not to develop those crispy brown edges on the leaves. It's nearly impossible to achieve this so every calafea I've ever owned has had brown leaves. I have a Calafea Zebrina that was given to me about 10 years ago that has always had brown leaves. I also have an Elga grass, which is probably one of the more forgiving varieties of Calafea, but still this has brown tips on the leaves. Calafeas require high humidity and consistently moist soil, so they need a lot of mothering, which can be a real pain. The thing with Calafeas is that they look absolutely gorgeous in the shops. They have stunning leaves with distinctive colors and patterns that suck so many people into buying them. They also tend to look really healthy in the nursery because garden centers are normally the perfect environment for Calafeas. They're warm, humid, and they're often watered. As soon as we bring them home into a drier environment, they begin to develop their infamous brown leaves. Let me know in the comments if you have a Calafea that does not have brown leaves and what you've done to keep it this way. The common theme for most of the plants on this list is that they need high humidity to thrive. This is also true of my next plant, the Boston Fern. This plant is super delicate with very fine leaves that look absolutely stunning when in full health. This means that they are a popular plant, but people tend to get disappointed when they start to look a little bit ropey. Boston Ferns have very particular care requirements, otherwise their leaves go crispy and brown. They need high humidity a warm environment and no exposure to cold temperatures. They'll also not do well if they get exposed to any hours of direct sunlight. This is why I've tended to avoid buying this plant in the past, even though it's a plant that I think looks really nice. Do let me know in the comments if you have this plant and how you find looking after it. The Tradescantia tiana is another plant that is really difficult to look after. This plant is normally sold as a very compact plant with thick, lush growth, but as soon as you bring it home, it starts to become leggy. So the growers give this plant a hormone that encourages the plant's stems to push out lots of leaves that are spaced very tightly. This hormone wears off once we have it in our homes for a few weeks and the leaves become more spaced out and the stems much leggier. The other problem with this plant is that it is extremely susceptible to developing brown leaves. This usually happens when the leaves become too moist. So you have to be really careful when watering this plant not to get water on the leaves. So basically, avoid this plant unless you know exactly what you're getting yourself in for and are up for the challenge of looking after it. The next plant on this list may be a surprising addition for those of you that have been watching my channel for a while, but it's one that you need to be really careful when buying so that you know what you're getting into and it's the Philodendron Birkin. This plant is actually my favorite house plant. I just love the pinstripe variegation in the leaves and the fact that the new leaves come out all white and turn green slowly as they get older. The problem with this plant is that they can be really fussy. Firstly, they need bright light so they don't lose the variegation in the leaves. So if you keep it in a low light spot in your house, it will start to turn all green. The variegation is also considered unstable, which means you never know what the next leaf will look like. I've had leaves that come out half green and half white. This can be stressful if you don't know much about the plant. They're also quite fussy with regards to watering. Overwatering this plant will mean that the new leaves will come out brown and eventually die off due to rot. So my plant at the moment has been suffering with this recently. So if you want an easy life as a plant parent, I'll consider another type of philodendron that's a little bit more forgiving, 
such as the philodendron brazil. Pothos plants are generally pretty easy to care for, but there is one pothos in my collection that I find pretty fussy, and I warn you about purchasing one for yourself, and that is the pothos enjoy. So I bought this plant online a couple of years ago because I fell in love with the green and white variegation in the leaves, and it's a stunning plant when in full health, and a very popular one too. I have had a fair few issues with this plant, particularly the leaves on the plant, going brown and crispy. So I think this is all to do with watering and I think it's a particularly fussy plant in this area. This plant doesn't like to have wet feet and it doesn't like to dry out too much. So basically it's a bit of a Goldilocks plant when it comes to watering. If you can give it the time and attention it wants, then this is a lovely plant. Just be wary that it does require a lot of attention. So perhaps not ideal if you're a beginner plant enthusiast. Orchids are stunning plants with beautiful colourful flowers, but honestly I tend to avoid them. This is because they are generally quite short lasting, unless you're skilled enough to get them to re-bloom. You always see them in the garden centres in full bloom, in various bright colours and they look absolutely stunning, but when you bring them home they lose their flowers and we're left with an ugly looking stem sat on our windowsill. I've always found it really hard to get orchids to re-bloom. I think there are very specific requirements to get them to do this. So do let me know in the comments if you've had more success with this and what I need to do. The next plant on my list is one that I've never owned because I've heard horror stories about how fussy it is, and that is the zebra plant. So I saw this plant on my recent trip to Dobby's and I was almost sucked into buying it because I think it does look really fantastic. This plant is very similar to Calafeas in that they need high humidity and damp soil for them to be happy and not have crispy brown edges on the leaves. Once again, you'll see this plant absolutely thriving in the garden center because the conditions are just right for it but bring it home and chances are those big beautiful leaves will start to deteriorate. The banana plant is another plant that I tend to avoid purchasing because it is a fussy house plant. This plant is susceptible to browning and yellowing leaves due to a lack of humidity and water in the soil, much like calafeas and zebra plants. Again, these plants look great in the shops in the right environment with big green leaves, but as soon as we get it home, it normally starts to deteriorate unless we treat it just right. The Tradescantia zebrina is one of the most popular plants out there and you'll be able to find it in all your local shops and garden centres, but this plant can be very problematic. You might notice that the stems at the base of the plant are beginning to die back. This is a common issue with Tradescantias and it's all to do with how it grows and spreads in the wild. As the plant grows, it sends out its long vines and it would naturally push out roots at each of the leaf nodes on the vine to attach itself to the forest floor. This strengthens the stem and it can continue to grow and spread in a weed-like fashion. In our homes, we normally allow this plant's stems to trail over the pots, but this means that the plant hasn't got anything to attach its roots to. So this weakens the stems, and when it gets long enough, it begins to die back at the base of the plant. This, unfortunately, is unavoidable and something that will eventually happen to all the stems of the plant when they get long. So the best thing to do here is to propagate the plant. So keeping this plant looking its best takes a lot of time and effort and probably not suitable for beginners. The next plant on my list is one that is quite upsetting for me and it's the Chlorophytum orchidastrum or the green orange plant. This plant is actually a close relative to the spider plant. So I bought this plant on my online plant shopping and unboxing video even though I knew pretty much nothing about the plant. Basically I fell in love with the look of the orange stems with the green leaves, the contrast of both. I've also recently seen it at Dobby's looking absolutely stunning. Unfortunately since this plant has arrived at my house, it has regularly developed black leaves. There is a lack of information online about this plant because it is a relatively new plant, I think. But again, this blackening of the leaves is likely due to a lack of humidity. I've since grouped it with other plants to increase the humidity around the plant, and I've upped the watering as well, 
but is still producing black leaves, which I find really frustrating. This plant is a bit of a mystery, so be careful if you want to get it yourself. And if you do have it and it's thriving, let me know in the comments how you treat it. If you want to stop buying unhealthy plants in the shops, then there are a few checks you should always make before buying a plant to make sure you don't bring home a plant with pests and disease. And in this video here, I explain what they are. So make sure you click on the link and I'll see you there.